Okay. Good. Welcome everyone to the Sonoma County Technical Advisory Committee. It is 1.33, I think pretty much everyone's here, so we'll get started. And as always, we would start with introductions. Um, I guess I'll do the run through, I hate this part. We have in attendance, Craig Scott from the city of Katati, Drew Nichols from SCTA, Kevin Thompson from the city of Cloverdale, Ken Eichstad from the city of Petaluma, Dave Reperda from Sonoma County Transportation Authority, Elizabeth Tyree from Sonoma County Parks, Edie Takata from Roner Park, Shauna Goss from SCTA, Chris Barney from SCTA, Mike Prince from the city of Santa Rosa, Steve Urbanic from the county, Hunter McLaughlin from the county, Nancy Adams from Sonoma, uh, Santa Rosa, Mario Landeros representing Sebastopol, James Cameron, SCTA, Oriana Hart, Sonoma County, Alejandro Perez from Windsor, and Orlando Ramirez from Caltrans District 4. Welcome, Orlando. And forgive me if I mispronounced anyone's name. <laughs> Uh, with that, we will move on to public comment. Seeing no one from the public, onward to approval of meeting minutes. Does anyone have any additions or comments on prior meeting minutes? Seeing none, would anyone like to make a motion to approve prior meeting minutes? Motion to approve, Larry. Yes, go for it. All right. And I'll second by that. Steve, seconded by Nancy, with no additional comments. That has been approved. Um, I see a new addition, um, Tom Conlon. Would you like to introduce yourself, Tom? Hi, all. Tom Conlon here in Sonoma Valley. Um, representing an individual today. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Glad you could join us. Um, we did pass any public comments. So if you have anything particularly you'd like to add, now would be a good time to shout out. Otherwise, you can comment, of course, as we go through. Thank you. I, I did have some comments later on in the agenda. So I'll wait for that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, onward, SB 743 updates. Chris? Yep. Um, thanks, Larry, and good afternoon, everyone. Just have a few items to update everyone on. So uh, first topic is progress on the VMT mitigation and VMT reduction calculator project. So uh, Fair and Peers is making good progress on that. Uh, the steering committee met uh, last month to actually review a list of mitigation measures, VMT mitigation measures that will be included in the tool and that will be quantified. Uh, so I've actually attached a memo to the agenda uh, that kind of goes through those mitigation measures. I believe there are 28 or 29 of those, along with some uh, dis discussion items at the end, uh, just as additional information. Uh, so that's the final list of PMT reduction measures that will be included in, in the tool. Uh, there are a number of other topics and approaches that were discussed by the steering committee, but this list um, actually has enough research uh, backing it up to, to quantify the VMT mitigation. So um, that's where we're at right now. Uh, and the final tool will have plenty of documentation on each of these measures as you go through and use it. Uh, right now, we're looking at having a draft of the tool ready by the end of May. Uh, so next week, I'll be sending out a poll to the steering committee to get that next meeting set up. Uh, so our next step is to actually review that draft tool uh, and then bring the final back uh, to the full tax. So we're looking at having a uh, rollout for the final tool and a training session uh, probably in July. Um, so yeah, making good progress and looking forward to seeing the draft tool. Ahead and dive into the next update. 
Uh, so the other item I just wanted to um, let everyone know about is MTC is actually uh, working with a consultant team to provide some um, a, curric a curriculum or a series of seminars focused on SB 743 implementation. Uh, so they're looking at holding a series of six to seven sessions uh, in each county going through a number of different topics. Uh, the first topic is going to be pretty elementary, just talking about SB 743, what it is, what the requirements are. Uh, so we're looking at scheduling something in June, and then the follow-up uh, sessions will dive into greater detail on implementation uh, tools, things like that. Uh, so right now we're trying to get that scheduled. We're looking at piggybacking possibly on the Planning Advisory Committee in June. Um, I'll certainly make sure that... Um, everyone on the TAC list receives an invitation to all of those sessions as well. But just wanted to let you know that that's going on. Um, the consultant team leading that is, um, includes staff from Fair and Peers and Nelson Nygaard. So uh, some folks that have been kind of in the trenches with implementation since uh, SB 743 requirements have been in place. So uh, look for an invitation if you're interested in that. Um, those will be starting in June and probably going forward over the next year or so. Looks like Nancy has a question. I do. Thank you, Chris. So, um, you know, you're, you, as, as always, you're doing a great job for, um, for this effort and um, much appreciate it. So we're, we're, we're anxiously waiting the tool to come out. So um, it's, it's gonna be exciting when we have that um, available to, to us. And I, I had a question now. Um, I have a, an invite for um, something from the Bay Area uh, in, in MTC and Caltrans. Is that on 743, is that something different, Chris, or is that part of this series of conversations that is, it's on the 23rd of May? So I just wondered, curious. That's a sep yeah, that's a separate meeting. And thanks for bringing that up, Nancy. Um, I should have publicize that wider. There's a Bay Area SB 743 working group uh, that's made up of um, staff from our sister agencies in the other county, counties. Um, Caltrans is on that MTC uh, and jurisdiction staff. So it's just an information sharing uh, group that, that meets every so often and talks about uh, what everyone's doing to implement SB 743 and, you know, issues they're facing and, you know, try and share information and make some contacts. So uh, that's the meeting on May 23rd. When there's a more firm meeting invite for that, I can send that out to this group as well in case anyone is interested in attending that. Thank you, Chris. I think that'd be good. Anyone else have any questions or comments for Chris? Seeing none, we will move on to item five. That's five, one, two, and three. I don't see Dana. I'm not sure who will be taking that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's Dana, but I'll be covering items 5.1 through 5.3 for Dana today. Thank you, David. If I could, uh, Tom has his hand up. Thanks, just to stay in the flow. I appreciate that presentation from Chris. I was curious about the telecommuting uh, measure. Um, since it, it looks like that's not going to be specifically quantified in the tool. I was just hoping maybe Chris, you could talk to that a little bit further. Yeah, that's, you know, that's definitely something that's been discussed uh, with the steering committee and also fair and peers. And, um, you know, right now it's, you know, there's a big question out there of whether or not working from home and telecommuting is actually reducing VMT. So it certainly could have other benefits, but you know there have been a number of studies that have shown that it could increase the MT <laughs> or keep um, not necessarily reduce it. Um, you know some of this research has shown that uh, it's effective at reducing congestion during the peak hours, but it may increase uh, travel during other times of the day. So you know that that's the justification that uh, Fair and Pierce has provided for not including that specifically in this tool. Thank you. Back to David. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. This is an item for the TFCA fiscal year 22-23 proposed program of projects. 
Back in February, we issued a call for projects for a total of about $602,000 in funding for this fiscal year. Uh, of those funds, only 22% of the funds are competitive and the rest of the funds are distributed by formula to Santa Rosa City Bus, Sonoma County Transit, and Petaluma Transit. Uh, with the applications that were received for the competitive program, there was only about 120,000 of the 134,000 in funding set aside uh, for those competitive applications. And so there were some extra funds that were added to the only project that could still uh, take more funds, which was from Sonoma County Transit for electric bus purchase. Uh, this is due to the cost effectiveness thresholds for the TFCA program. And so we're asking for your recommendation to the board that they approve the fiscal year 22-23 TFCA program project. So it includes two electric bus purchases from Sonoma County Transit and Santa Rosa City Bus, bike parking in the city of Petaluma and the city of Santa Rosa, transit marketing for Petaluma Transit, and also funding for SCTA's Go Sonoma Q program. And I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Seeing no questions, David, you need a motion? Yes, we're looking for a motion and a second. Would anyone care to make a motion? Probably someone from Santa Rosa, Petaluma, or the county. Well, I'll throw one out there for a second. Santa Rosa. Second. Seeing no objections, that passes, David. You can move on to 5.2. All right, thank you. So item 5.2 is just for information. It is the TDA Article 3 program of projects. This program of projects was approved by the CD PAC previously, and it will be taken to the board for their approval on May 9th. And it includes funding for Sasquatch's SR 116 ADA curb ramp project, Petaluma's Lynch Creek Trail project, and San Rosa's Highway 101 bicycle and pedestrian you know, crossing. And as I mentioned, this item is just for information. Any comments? Seeing none, onward 5.3, David. And item 5.3 as well as an information item on the status of the TDA Article 3 projects and the TFCA projects. If you have any questions about your projects or their status, please feel free to reach out to us at any time. Excellent, seeing no questions. Thank you very much. And onward to item six, Measure M. So those are me, Mr. Chair. So uh, as we do each month, we bring you the uh, invoicing and obligation status. So if you're in the red, then you know that you have action that needs to be taken. Um, and that's all I really need to say about that item. We're all pretty familiar with this whole spreadsheet. So we'll just leave it there. Um, I'm going to go back. So if there are there any questions? Yeah, Nancy, go ahead. So we haven't, oops, sorry. I'm off mute. Um, so I, I noticed the same was Creek. We haven't talked. Um, we need to talk about the agreement. So, um, so I guess we did submit the invoicing for the um, yes, we the environmental received your so. invoicing, but it happened after this agenda was prepared and sent out. So, okay, um, got it. That okay, was, fair enough. Uh, it's in yeah. process. Good. Okay, fair enough. And we'll we'll talk off offline about the the, the, the co op um, for that same project. So, thanks, Shona. Great. Thank you. Are there any other questions regarding the invoicing and obligation status spreadsheet? With your permission, Mr. Chair, I will move us on to 6.2. Please. Okay, so I am going to share my screen and take you through the implementation plan. Everybody can see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. 
So this should say draft across the front of it, but I grabbed a different, a slightly different version, but this is the version that we sent out to you other than that draft stamp. This is the culmination of a couple years of work. You know that we use the Measure M strategic plan as our five-year planning and programming document. And so uh, there are some changes. You know, you will also recall that we came, we did a call for projects for, or not a call for projects, a call for new programming uh, about a year and a half ago. And then uh, we approved that programming last year in May. And now we are to the point where we have gotten the, with a few uh, delays, we have gotten the actual document. And you're all familiar with it. It's a, it's a fairly hefty document. And so I'd like to walk you through what this project will look like or what this document will look like um, and then seek your approval. We will, we intend to take this document as in its draft format to the board for approval in June but we, would, we are seeking input from you on this today. So uh, I'll start with the cover. You'll notice that we have changed the title. We used to call it the strategic plan, but a strategic plan is um, a more 30,000 foot level document. And this is really the, how we implement Measure M. So we've changed the title to the strategic implementation plan. You'll notice that we've also updated the the logo of Measure M because we will be transitioning into the Go Sonoma measure. So with that, we'll move us on to the contents. You guys should be pretty familiar with how this is set up, but essentially chapter one is the executive summary. Chapter two is the background of Measure M and how we got to this point. Chapter three is the strategic approach. That's where a lot of the financial information rests. Chapter four is where all of the policies are. This is the meat of how we implement Measure M and how Measure M works for you. And then chapter five is the cash flow model that shows you all the actuals up through fiscal year 21-22. Is that right? Or 2021? I think it's actuals through uh, 2021. And then uh, the rest is projections. And then... Finally, we get to chapter six, which is the uh, project information sheets. Those are the tracking sheets that we use for each of the projects. Since there are three project specific programs in Measure M, each project that was listed in Measure M gets an information sheet so that sponsors, stakeholders, the public, SCTA can thumb through it and find the uh, basic set of information about each one of the Measure M projects. And then we end up with the appendices. That's where we have a project sponsor checklist. Not very many people use it, but it is there for your reference and for your use should you need it. And also that is where we keep the measure that went to the voters, the, the voter pamphlet information, which is really the Bible of Measure M. That's where the expenditure plan is. That's what the voters approved. So that's where we go when we really need to reference what Measure M says. <clears throat> so with that, I'll walk us through a couple of things that I think you guys will be interested in. First is in chapter three, we move all the way through because you guys are familiar with the background and, and the executive summary. So in chapter three is where the financial information is. And this shows you the historical data. Ta uh, table 3.1 shows you the historical data. So as I said, it comes, the actuals come through fiscal year 2021, and then um, it shows you the average for three year, five year, 10 year, and all the data for where we are in terms of what we expected versus what we have, what we have collected. This is our growth. Um, so uh, hasn't always been great. You can see, or you know, during the recession, we we did have some negative growth, but we are back. If we average out all the data that we have, we are back to a 3.86% uh, growth rate. And uh, we have hope that it might even be more than that when we get to the end, but that's what it is right now. 
So with that, I will move us to the apportionments. This is just sort of uh, interesting information that is particular to the technical advisory committee because you guys use the apportionment programs. Um, so far, we have brought in about $90 million, but we, or this is, this is not so far. This is what we project to be what we will bring in at the end of the measure based on that growth data that I just showed you. So we're looking at about $90 million for the local streets projects uh, program, whereas we had projected 94. So we're slightly short, but um, we may get, we may get more than that, but that's what it looks like right now. So uh, there is a little bit of a discussion here about what we expect about uh, Go Sonoma. And this shows you this figure that you've probably seen before where um, Measure M expires. We had the election in November of 2020. Measure M expires in March of 2025. And Go Sonoma starts in April of 2025 and goes forward for 20 years. So just a little reminder. Other things to draw your attention to. In chapter four, we had uh, that policy change for the maintenance of effort. You guys all just went through that. We talked about it last month. Um, so the, this is the only policy that's really changed since the last version of the strategic plan. So just drawing your attention to policy 14. Um, the next thing that I'll show you is the cash flow model. This is chapter five, you know, a segment of chapter five. And this shows you where we get all that actual data through 2021. And then moving forward, we're, we're looking at projections. So um, that's based on that data that I showed you from chapter three. Project info sheets. This is where we will be looking from it for input from the project sponsors. Now you'll recall that we brought you the project information sheets or we contacted all of the project sponsors and asked them to review the project information sheets uh, that pertained to their jurisdiction. And uh, hopefully we've incorporated all that. So what we're looking for from you today is if there are any inaccuracies, hopefully we've incorporated all of those changes and comments that you've provided to us before. So now uh, we're just looking to find out if there's anything that we have missed or if there's anything that is inherently inaccurate about what is presented in the project information sheets. With that, I will move to local street projects. As you are familiar, the local street projects portion of this chapter in chapter six starts with a map, an overall map that shows you where all of the measure M projects are located in Sonoma County. And You'll notice that the next page is a big gray spot. That's because that's where the graphic artist will insert yet another photo that she doesn't yet have. But because this is a draft, we will have a picture there in the final version, but it doesn't have it right now. Uh, other things that I'd like to draw your attention to are in the uh, information sheets. You'll notice that here you can see that there's a completed tab. If there are portions of a project that are complete, we try to highlight those and then mark them as completed so that anyone at a glance can flip through these information sheets and see what is done and what still needs to be done. This is how we track, especially since um, if I go back here and go back, I'm gonna go back and then go to the uh, 101 program, you can see this is a great map. And this was called out to us during the Citizens Advisory Committee meeting earlier this week. This is a great infographic that shows you what has been done and what is still being completed. These green parts are the only parts of the Marin Sonoma Narrows that aren't done. And then all of the rest of the 101 program, this blue portion is completed. It's a great graphic. It is really uh, clear and it's that easy to view corridor. Um, we don't have something as easy to do with the local streets projects. And I'm gonna cycle through all the 101 projects real quick like and get us back to here because so many of these projects don't 
have they have multiple phases so not everything is done but we've accomplished a lot so instead of you know not showing complete or incomplete uh, we've tried to identify each of the sections that are done in each one of these measure and projects. So that's what that little tab is for and the highlighted area. By PED, it's very similar. You can see these are all the pro this is where all the projects are located. That's the overview of the, of the county. And then this is where uh, we talk about each one of the projects. Did want to give a little shout out to Foss Creek Trail since it is complete. Um, as far as Measure M is concerned. Uh, of course, there are other phases of the Foss Creek Trail plan, but as far as measure, what was in the Measure M expenditure plan, Foss Creek has been delivered. So, yeah. And uh, I'm hoping that we can, get, uh, we can get a photo put in here too of the ribbon cutting or something, because that is just such a success story that we're really happy to see it. Uh, and then finally, I will take you to here are the appendices. And as I mentioned, this is, this is the project sponsors checklist. And we're using that new uh, transition logo again. And then finally, the voters pamphlet information where this is really our Bible. This is what we go to when we need to say, what does Measure M actually say about X? This is what we go to. So with that, Mr. Chair, I would hand it back to you so that there can be a discussion, but we are seeking approval of, uh, or what we're seeking is a recommendation for approval to the board. And with the understanding that we will incorporate any comments, you know, editorial, small editorial comments, like um, if we go back here to, the, you can see here that there's, a, there's an overlap between what should be on the page, that, that header should be, 2022 Measure M Strategic Plan and then Bicycle and Pedestrian Project Number X on either side. But there's a there's an overlap. The graphic artist needs to fix that. We're aware of it. So those types of, of editorial changes will be made prior to printing, but we are seeking approval of this document and a recommendation for approval from you guys to the board. So one, one point of clarification, Shauna. Um... You said a couple of times you're looking for people to review parts of this. Um, what I'd like to know is if we've got any, just for the project sponsors, if there are any inaccuracies. We did meet with all you all, and all the project sponsors, and we talked about all the projects, the project information sheets. We sent them out for review, and we got comments back. Those were incorporated. So we just want to make sure we didn't miss something or type it wrong. But other than that, this is we, I mean, we have and we have looked it over. It looks right to us. We just are asking that if there's something that pops out by probably middle of next week would be great. If, if anybody notices anything that's wrong, if they could get it back to us so that we can incorporate that before it goes. Perfect. That was the clarification I was looking for. I see Nan oh, Nancy's had a hand was up, but is no longer up. So with that caveat. That was more answered. Yeah. Yep, that was the question I had as well. So thank you, Shauna. So no later than the middle of next week, if anyone sees any error, they're gonna get back to Shauna. With that, uh, do we have a motion to approve the document as is? We do not. You're done with your document, Shauna. It's not moving forward. I'd make a motion to approve. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll put it out there. I'll put it out there. And is this, right. so, so Sean, right. is, uh, is, is this our last? I'm sorry, Nancy, I was talking over you. Go ahead. No, I will uh, put the. Front Yeah. I'll second. Yeah, I'll put the motion, motion out there for approval. Craig okay. Scott Cadati, I'll second. We, we have a couple of motions and a second, so thank you. And unless anyone has additional comments, I think we can move on. The next item is regional update, starting as always, 7.1 inactive federal obligation status. Shauna? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, <clears throat> we have been through this before. Let me get to that item really quick like a bunny. Uh, 
should be in. It's the um, last page of the PDF, page 20. Yep. Oh. Just, yep. Let me make that a little bit bigger. easier to see. So uh, we did this last month as well, um, where I have started tracking in the final column what was reported last month. So we can track from month to month. Because there are some things that, uh, like this particular item for the county, where it says, um, Stewart's Point Gag Springs and Nader has reported that the project is canceled and they're waiting for Caltrans to remove it from the list. So not really something that we can report out on, but there are a couple of things that are new to the list. Um, and those I would like to get a report out on. Um, I know that we had, uh, we had an item from Sonoma, the city of Sonoma last month that is no longer on the list. So. Yay, well done getting that off the list. We do still have a project from Runner Park that needs an update since last month. Last month, um, it said seeking a revision to the E76 to push fun funds from CE to construction. Uh, we need FHWA approval on that action. Once the approval uh, is received, the final package is ready to submit. So um, do, is there an update on the status of that, Edie? I talked with Ken and we don't have an update, so. Bummer. I know. He said, so I said, how long does this take? And he says, it depends on the workload. So not his. <laughs> I feel like that needs to be, you know, that needs to be reflected in the, in the list itself. I mean, the, you know, it doesn't really say, it doesn't really indicate here that we're waiting on them, not <laughs> they're waiting on us. So I, 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 that's not for you. That's not for you guys to manage, though. I will. I, I need to give that feedback to Caltrans. So, um, Edie, I, I just got a. Oh, Shauna, I just got an email from um, uh, Danny, uh, communicating with Ken on a couple of our projects, and the the response we got back from Ken is he's been on on vacation, and he's. He's just catching up and there's no priority on, on how to assist everyone. So it's kind of catch as catch can. So I don't know. I don't know, Edie, when he'll get back to you, but he, he's telling Danny that he's got a huge battle since yeah, he's been but, gone. So just FYI. Yeah, I happened to catch him because I knew that he, I talked to him before he went on vacation and I caught him when he came back and I kept on calling him until... <laughs> So yeah, yeah, he, he does. Yeah, it's a lot. He's, he was very confused when I talked to him because we have several projects and see what we can do. Okay. Um, I didn't see Nader. Is Steve, are you prepared to talk about these projects that are new to the list? Yeah, I'll talk about them. Sorry, oh, I was Nader, late. There you are. Hi, I didn't see you. Yeah, no, I, I, sorry for coming late. I had to handle a couple of things. Plus, I was on, with Ken on the phone. Uh, anyway, okay. Edie, this is neither from the county. If it makes you feel better or bad, I don't know. But I have three projects for the county that they have been completed three years ago. I've been trying to adjust the cost from CON to CE. They haven't closed it yet. They have the package. And to help me out, Caltrans, what they did, they gave me a CWA for it another two years. So which means th those projects may be closed in the next two years. So I don't know if that makes you feel bad or good, but just be patient with them. All right, yeah. I'll, give you, I'll give you updates on mine. Actually, my list shouldn't be any there, but we cannot argue with the godfather with Caltrans. Uh, let me start with the 32576. You already have the information on it. Yeah. 102. The, I'm really the, interested in the ones that are uh, new to the list. Yeah, there are yeah, three, that's, and those are the, the ones that start with 40. Yes, the three, the 40, A, 0, 102, 103, and 104 are the result of the cancellation of 576. And 
on the 25th, which is day, three days ago, two days ago, we received the supplemental agreement to show that we can invoice. Before the 25th of this month, we had no authorization to proceed. We received the supplemental agreement signed by Caltrans. I haven't seen the E76 yet for it. So those project has been issued to us a while back as an AC. They just convert the AC to actual money. Okay. However, you'll see it on the list of Caltrans on the inactive list that they have been on the inactive list for nine months. So I have to rush in and submit. So staff are working on an invoice. Hopefully next week you'll have invoice for all three. Great. 164, an invoice already submitted to Caltrans. For 576, I'm gonna use the 12, more than 12 months reporting. Hopefully I'll bring Caltrans attention to it to close it. And answering your email, sorry, I couldn't get to your email. I will CC you on the 20, more than 24 on Lambert. And that's a golden opportunity for me to put all my facts on the table for Caltrans. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. And I, I, will, I will send you also an email. So this way you, you will fill your uh, remarks uh, column on your spreadsheet. Great, thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. There's no problem. Okay, that concludes that item, Mr. Chair. Okay, on to the feature presentation, item 7.2, the OBEG Cycle 3 update and funding program evaluation criteria. There was a separate email that Drew sent out on this item and it's not in the packet. Okay, so hopefully everybody received that one. I'm going to... So hopefully you are seeing the I'm going to close that. There we go. Okay. So um, where are we? How do we get here? This is this item is the SCTA funding program evaluation criteria. So SCTA did a call for projects. Uh, actually, let me start with our recommendation. The recommendation is that the Technical Advisory Committee review the proposed funding program evaluation criteria and recommend them for approval to the SCTA board. That's what we're seeking today. So let me go back and give you a little bit of background. We did a call for projects last year. We, uh, because we saw a need to combine a lot of calls for projects into one effort. There are so many different um, funding sources that we thought it would be easier to consolidate everything into one call for projects. So we asked project sponsors to, eligible project sponsors to submit to us their top five projects. We got over 60 projects and uh, we got a project, we got projects from each one of the transportation and public works departments, and we also received applications from the transit agencies and the, and uh, SMART. I include SMART in the transit agencies. Uh, so we reviewed those applications and SCTA staff reviewed those applications, and then we met with all the project sponsors and we talked about those applications, and then we, said, we made suggestions on where we thought uh, we might add information or massage information so that the project applications would be their best selves when they were competing with other projects, particularly on a regional level, because we anticipated using this call for projects, not just for uh, local funds, but also for uh, a one Bay Area grant, cycle three. So uh, with that, we, we received revised applications. We put all of those into a spreadsheet, which is now located on our website. You'll recall that I showed you that website last month. We went through and showed you the spreadsheet that shows all of the applications that were received and how you can link through that spreadsheet on our website. 
to each individual application that we received. But now SCTA had been waiting for MTC to provide a standard application that they will be looking for um, for the One Bay Area grant funds. And because SCTA has received that, we were able to develop our evaluation criteria to try to compare all of the applications on a, an equal basis. So what we did was we used the um, MTC application and we also used the criteria that were established when Go Sonoma was passed to, because we also had identified things, about criteria that would need to be met with projects that would be funded with Go Sonoma. So with that in mind, we developed these evaluation criteria. So I'm gonna walk you through that. Um, this is the evaluation criteria. And so this comes directly from the application that we received from MTC. And so this is essentially establishing, we will use this portion of the evaluation criteria to establish whether or not it, a project is eligible for STP or CMAC. And so either the project is eligible or it is ineligible. And then we will identify that here. And that's just not on this PDF, but on the application itself, there's a pull down item that says yes or no right there. There are 12 questions worth a total of 200 points. And they identify all of those things, all of those values that were established in Plan Bay Area. And we are expected to meet with OBAG 3 and with Go Sonoma. Those inherently carry over to several of the other project funding that we will be using, where park mitigation fees or um, the the SB1 programs. So we can make sure that we evaluate everything on an apples to apples basis. And then we feel confident that we are also addressing the CTP and Plan Bay Area and Go Sonoma's requirements. So that's why you'll see all of these different topics. These come directly from either Plan Bay Area, the CTP, or Go Sonoma. That will run through the questions. First is equity priority communities. And a lot of this, I will say, is based on uh, a number of different things. We did peer review of other sister agencies that have done this type of thing before. We used some of the criteria that were used in ATP applications and we developed things that we feel address what we need to look at for Go Sonoma. So we start here with the equity priority communities and there are, there are uh, points awarded for it's in an equity priority community or it's not, whether or not, and then, you know, how to evaluate the equity priority community. Uh, second we have is potential for mode shift. I can go through each one of these, and I'm hoping that everybody had an opportunity to look through these before we started talking about them today. Uh, question three is uh, collisions and safety. This will also help us address HSIP projects. And it is what we were trying to do is make something that was quantifiable rather than how we did it last time, which was really sort of qualitative and a little less um, easy. Well, it, it, it was difficult to compare across projects. We feel that this is really an equalizer and allows us to compare across projects. To, uh, Number four, public participation and community support. We did sort of hammer on this when we met with all of the project sponsors during that initial round where uh, 
MTC is looking for a lot more public engagement. And so we did talk about that and we know that you have already done a lot of that. So providing that information in the applications we felt was important. It is something that MTC will be looking for us to do and for the project sponsors to have already done. So we wanna make sure that we're, we're hitting that because that is a very big item when we get to the evaluations of what is what has been done so far. Uh, question number five is improved public health. Well, but uh, I have this go back. I mean, I think you kind of get the idea. I don't, um, as I said, I hope everybody had an opportunity to look this over. Um, we're talking about employment opportunities, job growth, that kind of thing. And not everybody's going to have that and that's okay, but we need to, we need to be able to quantify it. So, because that is some of the criteria that we have to look for, for some of these other, some of these other funding programs. Question liability and uh, reliability and traffic flow that uh, comes directly from Go Sonoma infrastructure condition that speaks to um, fix it first and you know correcting standards that kind of thing and then uh, this is a crosswalk so that that ends sorry this is the end of the evaluation criteria so as I said 200 points total um, and we will score everything all of the projects that were submitted. Uh, what follows is a crosswalk. So as I mentioned, this is the application that we received from MTC. This is the um, eligibility portion of that application. And then what we did was identify which of the evaluation criteria address which portions of this application so that we were sure that we had something on our evaluation criteria that was going to address each one of these items so that we felt like we're covering everything. And this was provided in the packet, so you should be able to look this up. So for safety, that goes back to question number three in the evaluation criteria and so forth. We don't really have freight movement and economic vitality, so we're not really gonna address that one. I mean, SMART is doing a little bit of freight, but it's like, two things, they move chicken feed and they move uh, hops for Lagunitas. So that's that's pretty much it. We haven't got a huge freight movement issue in Sonoma County. So with that, I would turn it back over to you, Mr. Chair, and ask for questions and comments. And as I said, we are seeking a recommendation for approval. This is going to the SCTA board in May. And I know that it is short timeframe. Um, we were hampered by when we heard back from MTC on their application and when they will do, when they will give the CTAs their nod for, yes, you can go forth, which is essentially May 1st. They're gonna say, we've met with all the CTAs, you guys can do your call for projects. All the other, transportation authorities will then do for their call for projects. We've already done our call for projects. So at that point, we will evaluate all of our projects. But in order to get through an evaluation process and get to all of the committees and do the public outreach that we need to do, this needs to be um, set so that we can move forward. Craig, I see your hand is up. I'll go to you first. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Shauna. A um, couple of questions. So we had that discussion at the beginning of the meeting um, on Vision Zero. Would you recommend or do you think that uh, agency bodies acceptance of the Vision Zero plan is vital to having a decent score on this? And then the, the second question I had was on page five, specifically with those weighting factors. What, what's the, what's What's determining that weighting? Yeah, right there. 
Feb is past it. Uh, Here? Uh, it's the bold table. It's got 200 points. Ah, uh, uh, yes, of course. Um, yeah, that one. So what is, is that SCTA staff yes. determining that or is that predetermined by, oh, it is, okay. No, so this is SCTA staff. The SCTA staff developed this evaluation criteria and SCTA staff will be doing the evaluation. Okay. And then the vision zero plan adoption. Um, I'm not sure I have an answer for that. Um, I mean, it certainly will not hurt. <laughs> and if it were not done, I think it, it will make a difference, but I don't know. I mean, not all the jurisdictions are gonna be equal in this, right? So I, I certainly think, I don't know that it would rule you out. You hadn't. It, it will probably mean that your score is lower. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Nancy, I see your hand is raised. Yeah, th thanks, Shauna. So um, I had the question um, about the, the the point values that, that Craig brought up. So um, I that was an internal staff conversation, and I and I guess so. So then I, I just I'm trying to figure out process, Shauna. So when I looked at this, and <laughs> so are you using all this scoring rubric to 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 review the applications that we've already submitted? Yes. And okay, so so that's how you're going to evaluate all, all the work that we've already done, right? Is that, do I have that that's correct? Right. Yeah, and it's okay. possible that we might then, come back to the jurisdictions if we find that there is information that we can't get that we feel that you might still have, we might come back to you. But yes, we will be using this to evaluate the, the applications that we already have. Okay, so then, and then as far as OBAG three, so then how does that, that crosswalk document, um, is, was, is, it, is, that, is, is this in here just to show us that your, your effort has, has addressed all of MTC's criteria and we don't need to do anything else? So that's another question, I guess, to meet MTC's expectations. It is our intention to, I mean, for it was, it was important internally for us to know that we had identified criteria that we felt addressed each one of the items on MTC's application, because these are the things that they are going to be judging. So we felt we needed to also judge those so that we could determine which projects would score the best when we submit, because You'll recall that we are given a target for OBAG and MTC has told us that we can submit up to 120% of that target. But it's possible that they won't select all of those projects, right? I mean, if we're gonna submit 120% and they're only gonna fund 100, then what happens to that other 20%? We have to, we're gonna to have to readjust. So we're gonna to want to, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we are, the most competitive with projects that we submit for OBAG. So we wanna make sure that our evaluation criteria will address what we think MTC will be judging when we submit for OBAG. But we also need to evaluate whether or not we think that these are good projects for GoSonoma or, or SB1 projects. So we will be using these criteria for all of the projects that were submitted and then we will try to address, and then we'll try to address, okay, not everybody can get OBAG. Some of the projects aren't even eligible for OBAG, capacity increasing projects, for example. So we know that those projects won't get one Bay Area grant funds. So what how are we gonna how are we gonna judge what doesn't get OBAG? And which ones do we think are most eligible for OBAG that will can that will compete regionally? So that so that's that that's my kind of my follow up question. So when you look at these um, with these scoring rubrics and you're looking at all these sponsors, I'm sorry, I just have to understand the process, right? So 
um, and maybe this help, helps others on this call, but you're going to be reviewing all the applications and, and making an assessment with because you're we're looking at a variety of funding programs, right? It's not just OBAG three; That's it's correct. it's the, the ones that you included in that. So, and then are you going to make an assessment of like Project X should get you know X dollars of like Go Sonoma? I, I I don't. I mean, that's just a very simple um, uh, accusation. But is is that what is that where this is you know? is that the, the, the end game in this or, or, or am I missing something? And then, and then how, I guess, so I'll, I'll stop there and then and see, see what that response is. Sure. So we've been through this before. We've been through it with the block grant, what we called, you know, OBAG one, OBAG two. And so we got sort of, taken to task last time about not having um, scoring criteria that we could that we could quantify. Um, and yes, we will be using it to identify, but we also that's why we that's why we tried to put all of these programs together because we know that not everybody's going to be able to be eligible or get OBAG and we want to make sure that everybody gets something that's a, that's that's how SCTA works right we need to make sure that we are improving transportation everywhere in the county as best we can with the best projects that we can so we have to be able to score them and we have to be able to try to establish some sort of geographic equity but we also need to be able to be transparent and open to the public about how we judge these and what it is that we are placing value on. And the public and our board has been very clear that, for instance, reducing emissions and addressing climate change is high up on their list. So in this scoring rubric, you'll see that emission reduction has a 30 point value. That is the biggest value of any of the questions. So we're trying to make sure that we are touching a number of different things, but that everybody is also gonna get, I mean, we hope that everybody has submitted their best projects and we are gonna to try to make sure that projects get implemented all over the county with this program, with the 2021, we're not calling it the 2021 funding program anymore, we're calling it the SCTA funding program cycle one. So Nancy, just to, be brief, yes, we're gonna use these criteria to score all the projects and then SCTA staff will determine what color of money is best for each project. And as Shauna mentioned, some projects aren't even eligible for OBAG, other ones may not be the best fit for it. So we'll be coming up with recommendations for all the different funding sources and bringing that back to you in the future. So, so thank you, David. So then at some point, I mean, I, I think that the first kind of uh, horse out of the gate is, is uh, in addition to the the um, the STIP funding that came in the um, that earlier programming exercise. I forget the other program, but will be the OBAG three. So how how is this going to work at a policy level? Because um, you know, and I know there's other people that have brought this up about you know the the, the list of projects that we submitted, and this is going to be over a, a, a fairly what a five year time frame what happens if for some you know if, if things change for a local in terms of their prioritization and that no longer is a priority and you've assigned you know you know a, a half million dollars of go sonoma to that project how how will SCTA address you know that nuance um and then um you know just yeah so I think it's a I, I, I applaud the effort, but I, there's just there's just questions that I have in my mind and, um, you know, and, and are there are there, you know, measures to address things that can cause hiccups with with the five year planning process. So just, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to speculate on if a project is awarded future funding, what would happen if it suddenly didn't become a priority for a jurisdiction anymore. I would say that GoSoma clearly identifies that it's competitive process and that projects are competitively scored. And we have to determine what we would do in the future if 
say we gave a project a million dollars to go send them one money and then the city didn't want to do it anymore, what would happen to that million dollars? I'm not sure at this point, but for now we need to move forward with a competitive process, not only for OBAG, but for go send them and the other funding sources that is defensible and meets the program requirements of all of the different funding programs. And we feel that we've developed a set of criteria that allow us to objectively do that. And that's why we bring this to you for your review before we go, before we go to the board in May. Yeah, I, I, I thank you for that. I, um, I, like I said, I just had questions and, and um, I, I think it's a, it's, it's a, it's a great, it's a great goal. And I, um, you know, just hope moving forward that, um, you know, we can, we can keep that momentum and, you know, we're all successful, right? Because I think, you know, you're, you, you look at it from the standpoint of, you know, project delivery and putting these dollars into the, into the ground or into our community. So, yeah. Any other comments? Uh, so when is this going to the board? May, May 9th. May 9th, okay. So, and I know you addressed it, but uh, it is a, <laughs> a very short turnaround. Um, I did not have much of a chance to go through it, um, but it. I would take comments and or <clears throat> um, we're not really taking edits. Um, I mean, I'm not, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm, not, I'm hoping not to change this in any significant way um, because we've put a lot of effort into this. But, you know, if there were fatal flaws, if there was something that you know, really stood out if there was, you know, if there are other smaller edits or comments that a, a project sponsor wanted to bring forward, I would take that up to probably next Wednesday. Um, but I've got to get this into the, I've got to get something into the board packet and be able to t speak to what the tax recommendation was. Gotcha. I, I, I completely understand. And from what little I have looked at it, clearly, you guys did a, a very thorough job. Um, it all makes sense to me. Again, I just, it, it feels, <laughs> we, we don't really have an option other than, like you said, to make some edits. Um, but I, I get that there were other factors leading up to that. Um, and before I turn it over to Steve, I, I'm not sure that I second Nancy's opinion, but I have very, some very similar opinions which I have stated in the past, I don't need to state again. Um, I'm sure we will all get a relatively fair share in the end of this. So um, with that, I'll turn it over to Steve. Yeah, uh, Shauna, I guess I'm, um, I, I understand the, the rubrics that you've come up with and you know, everybody can debate you know, the, the relative values for each one of them. I guess I'm wondering process wise now. So. You guys are going to go through and score each one of the projects, the five projects that every agency's put forward. You're going to obviously you'll develop a list of the the priorities from that scoring attempt, right? Is there going to be a presentation of that to the TAC and and then the you know the sausage making happens when you know Edie starts pulling hair and Mario starts to yell and stuff like that and you know, what sort of what's what's next here, Shauna, because, you know, we've we've all been through these, you know, funding cycles. And then at the end of the day, everybody wants their ugly dog to be the prettiest dog that's selected. Right. So um, after you go through that and, you know, we, we go through that that fun time. Um, what's next? Do they you ship them to uh, MTC for this is our our suite of projects that we're putting forward to compete? One that we're awarding our local money that we're we're getting out of the OBEC program, but also for the regional programs as well. Yeah. So let's see. So I've shared my screen again. Hopefully everybody can see it. The highlighted portion is what we're asking for today. That's the TAC review of the evaluation criteria, um, and we are expecting that. MTC will give the nod to all of the transportation authorities on May first. Do your call for projects. We did meet with SC, or with MTC. We showed them the evaluation criteria. They were on board. We showed them our process. 
we are providing that material to them so that they are fully assessed of how we are running our call for projects. Uh, we are the only we are the only county that did a call for projects already. Everybody else has to do their call for projects starting May 1st. After that, uh, while we're doing our evaluations, uh, we will be also doing public engagement on the projects that we've received. As we mentioned, they're already posted on our website. We walked through that with everybody last month. We will be taking that to community-based organizations and to all of the committees. So we will, once we evaluate all the projects, we will have a proposed list of projects and it will be for the whole funding program, not just OBAG, but it will include OBAG. And then we will take a, we will take all of that to the committees in June. And then we will take a draft list to the board in July. Now we expect everybody to have some teeth gnashing and hair pulling and that sort of thing. So it's a draft list that goes to the project, to the board in July. And then there will be July through August. And then we will go to the board again in September with the final list, right? Um, to make sure that we are addressing not only OBAG, but all the other funding programs that we have and that we've got geographic equity and that we've got some sort of, you know, uh, hopefully we've got geographic equity and then we've got, we're making everybody whole, everybody's getting something. That's the, that's the intent, but we can't, we can't promise that because we have to score everything too. Right. But anyway, we'll take it to the board in July, again, in September. And then at, on September 30th is when it's all of our OBAG projects are due to be submitted to MTC. So at some point, probably in July, when we identify which projects we think should be submitted for OBAG, we will contact the jurisdictions and the jurisdictions will have to fill out that application that I showed you that MTC provided. We'll ask for those jurisdictions that we think are competitive for OBAG to fill out the application. We'll probably fill out the application for more than 120%. We'll probably do like 150% so that we have backups and things that we can move around should things go sideways. We'll submit that list of 120% of our target to MTC in September. Then MTC will do their evaluations. MTC will be evaluating their pro our projects, all of the projects across the region from September. And then staff recommendations will come out in December. And then the, the MTC commission will approve projects in January. After that, we will have to assess which projects did we submit that didn't move forward? Those are gonna to have to get some other form of, because they clearly scored high enough that we thought they were good projects for OBAG. So we're gonna to have to probably readjust some of what we've done, either hold out reserve of, of Go Sonoma or what, of some other uh, funding source so that we can make sure that those projects are made whole. And then we will fund, we will have a final of what our SCTA funding program is in February. So. MTC will approve the OBAG list in January. We will approve our final, final SCTA cycle one funding program in February of 23. And then we have to get everything into the tip as well. Yeah, this is this is a little different than you know past OBAGs or it whatever is. you want to call them, because for you know, you guys had a bucket of money and we threw applications at it and the SCTA approved. The projects associated with that bucket of money. Well, that's OBAG true. To OBAG one, right? Yes. And I guess that that's what true. I'm trying to understand or be able to explain is so how is MTC involved in the project selection at this point from you know the models that we've had in the past? Sure. So the models we had in the past were we were given targets and then we were and then we were pretty much given carte blanche for us to choose. Yeah. But FHWA said, no, 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 that's not how it's supposed to be done and took MTC to task. It must be competitive. Thus, we are doing, so we've, that's why we established the evaluation criteria. That's why the whole process looks different this time. In addition to the fact that we've recombined our OBAG call with this call for all these other funding sources, because we're trying to make it efficient 
I know it seems sort of onerous right now, but the idea is to look at all of these projects as one and pick the projects that are the most competitive to go to OBAG and then also that are going to address all of the issues that we've identified in the CTP and in, in Go Sonoma. And so it, it does look very different. We don't get FAS anymore. We don't get, you know, it's not a, it's not a, this is what our amount is. That's our target. And we have to hope we might get more than that. We might get, we might get 115% funded if we submit 120, because we end up with really, really, really good projects that we evaluated and we submitted really, really competitive projects. That's a possibility too. Sweet. Yeah, I, I guess this is changing because some of the CMAs in past distributions used formulaic sort of yeah, distributions, that is not allowed. right? That, is, that has been absolutely forbidden, not allowed anymore. It was, it was never allowed. We were doing it wrong, is what FHWA said. And MTC got a slap on the wrist. Okay. Edie? Okay, so real basic, just so I know what my hour staff's next couple months are we are filling something out no we're not filling anything out you're not right now taking what we have got that's why you said hey you know what you submit fix it up it's final that's it no more changes from whatever date that was you're taking that thing and applying this the rubric mm -hmm. um and this uh is good for the next um i forgot 25 years i mean not 25 years four years or so, it's projects that go across OBAC 3, SB1, Sonoma. Yes. And uh, as we go, you'll ask us for any changes or updates? As we go, if, there, if we find that there is information that, that we believe is out there that we don't have, traffic data, for instance, that we can't get from Chris Barney, then we might come back to the jurisdictions and ask you to do some some uh, fund provide some additional data. But other than that, this the, we're going to evaluate what you guys have submitted. And then at some point when we get a list, we're going to know which ones we want to get OBAG funds. At that point, we're going to ask those project sponsors that we are proposing get OBAG funds to fill out that MTC application. They will also need to fill out the new complete streets checklist, which has to be, you know, vetted through the CB pack and the transit, the transit TAC. And it's a new checklist that won't be available until May, end of May. So the, that has to be inserted into the process somewhere too. But we're going to all of the committees in June. So hope, we're hopeful that we're going to get all of this taken care of. And it's going to be a very busy summer here at SCTA. That looks like it. If we should want to volunteer, any other information? I mean, what? I mean, what kind of what kind of information are we talking about? Like we're we're still doing our, our um, LRS, LRSP. I don't know if there's anything in that that will reveal itself. Uh, we're continuing to do community engagement on um, all of our projects on our downtown. We just now. I mean, a week ago. We're uh, authorized to buy a State Farm project. So now we are in control of that. And anything that comes off of the smart station is not like dependent on this question mark developer. We are the developer. Um, so does that change things to, for this application? I, I don't know, but if it did, I, I mean, I need to have the gears going and, and apply that to where I can if it, if it makes any sense and if there's any impact to this. So. They say if there's something that you feel is is really significant, call us and we'll talk about it. Okay, thanks. See, I see your hand is raised again. It is Shauna. So um, I will put the uh, staff recommendation out for the TAC to consider that we 
move forward with the evaluation criteria and um, push that on to the SCTA board. So put that out there for a motion for this group to consider. Thank you. Well, second. We have a motion and a second, no objections. Mr. Collins' hand is raised, Mr. Chair. Oh, yes. Go ahead, Tom. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity before you uh, take your take your action today. Sean, I just wanted to say I, uh, this is wonderful to see all the work that's gone into the criteria, criteria development. Um, and I just hope these comments are just supportive of, of the general process here. Uh, I have a first question and then some other things to think about. So my question is, is the 15% weight for emissions reduction, that's 30 points out of 200, is that uh, proportional or comparable to what OBAG's criteria is? If you could just speak to that, uh, just so we have confidence that that weighting is the right relative amount of weighting relative to the other criteria in the stack. And then the, the other thing is I, I really enjoyed the specificity in uh, question three, collisions and safety. You clearly have data there. You can become specific and quantitative around. Um, I wondered if you could be similarly quantitative for questions eight and nine, eight being project location, which has to do with the community activity centers. Um, I know that Chris Barney and you all have done a lot of work on quantifying where the trips are. And it struck me that that rubric around project location was still a little qualitative and that you might not get all the benefit that you could if you were a little more specific around the high VMT TAS zones. So that was just a kind of think about it. Maybe, maybe uh, if there's a way to do that easily, it wouldn't be unfriendly to the group to, uh, to have that specificity and it might resolve some of the, you know, the hair pulling and those things that we of course anticipate. And then um, on emissions reduction, it, it occurs to me that you're metric here is cost effectiveness of emissions reduction. And I wondered if you'd thought through the, 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 the possible distortions that that creates versus absolute emissions reduction. You could have a, uh, a two projects side by side, identical in every way. One project's more cost effective, but produces very little in the way of absolute emissions reduction. And the other project produces a great deal, but is slightly less cost effective. And you'd end up awarding the small project more points. It's, it's, a, it's a classic problem in this kind of evaluation. So I just wanted you to think about that and whether there was a, a way of, if you thought about it already and you've decided no cost effectiveness is the, the principal way you wanna approach this. I know in the energy commission world, that you know, public utilities commission world that I come from, these efficiency versus absolute metrics have created distortions in 25 years of building energy policy. So just be thinking about that as transportation policy develops. Thank you for your consideration of my comments. Thank you, Mr. Conlon. I um, will say that I feel pretty confident in the weighting of the of the 30 point value um but as far as um being similarly quantitative for numbers eight and nine i i don't know that i have that i have the skill set to, to do that um and this was this was an attempt to try to make it quantitative and this is our first attempt, my first attempt anyway, at making a quantitative uh, evaluation versus the qualitative uh, evaluation that we did in the previous cycles. So um, those are 
more detail than I had given thought to at this point because I haven't been through this process before in, in this context. And uh, so I, there are certainly things that I will keep in mind, but no, I hadn't given thought to that before. And I do appreciate that you're bringing it up so that it will be in my mind when we, when we do those evaluations and we can try to um, identify those areas where we have projects that, you know, need a little bit of quantitative or no, sorry, qualitative massaging after we get to the, through the quantitative part. Um, so I will definitely take those comments under consideration and keep them in mind when we get there, but I, ha I wasn't prepared to do that sort of detail now, but thank you very much. Nancy, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I, you can make some logic with, with the infrastructure condition, right? Because it, it's, it, that, is, that provides a huge benefit when we have a smooth surface and, a, you know, and pavement that is good for our cyclists, it's good for our transit service, you know, and those obviously help reduce GHG. So, um, so there's, I think, I think you get the comment, Shauna, and I, I would say as you, as you perform your evaluation, those Thomas is spot on. You're, there's, there's other things too that you, you know, hopefully you'll, you'll consider for, for projects. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, those are some good comments. Um, I believe we had a motion on the floor. I don't know if there was a second. Oh yeah, there was a second. So with that, if there are no other comments, I think we are done. Okay, we will move on. Sorry, gotta change screens here. So I'm gonna stop sharing. The SCTA RCPA board meeting on May 9th. We know one item. Uh, let me pull that up. There we go. Where are we at? Five, nine. All right, can you see my screen or do I need to yes. make it bigger? I can, thank you, but. For those that don't know, in Zoom, under View Options, you can uh, enlarge what you're looking at as well. Thank you, Drew. Yeah, we so I think, I think what's important to note here for the benefit of the group is that it is a jam-packed agenda for me. <laughs> it's going to be very, very busy. That being the case, there are uh, quite a number of things on the consent calendar. And then there's also a large number of things on the regular calendar. So we will be going through um, budget adjustments, meeting notes, that sort of thing. There's also uh, the maintenance of effort. Um, action has been put on the consent calendar for the board unless they pull it, we expect that to go through. Uh, that was what we addressed with this body last month. Uh, there, there is a, uh, the adjustment to the measure and programming to accommodate the access across 101 request from Pet city of Petaluma that this body also addressed last month. There is also an appropriation request for the Fulton Road uh, construction project. And, um, uh, the Sustainable Transportation Planning Grant Award. We, SCTA has been awarded a planning grant uh, for, AT, for active transportation. And then on the regular calendar, uh, the, these evaluation criteria that we just finished talking about will be discussed on the regular agenda, as well as uh, a couple of the other um, active transportation items uh, that David identified earlier for um, TDA3 and TFCA. And then um, there's the, the joint items for SCTA, RCPA, including equity. And then all of the budgets are uh, going to the board. And then there's update on uh, quite a bit of legislation that is relevant to SCTA, RCPA. 
you have your hand raised again? I do. Yeah, I just want to say we um, the council awarded the construction contract for Fulton Road. Yay. Tuesday night, so we're good to go. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's a big. One. Yep. Are there are there questions about the the board agenda? We bring this to you so that you are prepared and you can brief your board members before they go to the meeting. So if there are any other questions, please feel free to contact us if you don't think of them right now, but it occurs to you later. We're always available. And I would turn it back over to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Shauna. Um, yeah, I always appreciate seeing the board meeting agenda beforehand. Um, we did have potentially another business here. Uh, I'm regarding the vision zero. I'm wondering if anyone else has any other other business. Seeing none, um, for those who would like to stay on, I, there was a conversation when I first logged in regarding the vision zero plan. I think there's a couple of questions regarding that. One um, is, whether or not the other agencies will be adopting that plan. And then to the presentation associated with that, um, a couple of us have reached out to Tool Design who did the presentation for SCTA and they said they will not do it without getting paid. Uh, SCTA does not have any additional money for them to present it. So now we're having staff who may not have been part of that process or um, aware of how the details have went into it presenting to our councils. And so just wanted to have an open discussion because it came up and Nancy, I don't know if you wanna kick it off. As soon as you can unmute. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Somebody, somebody's phone was really ringing loud at my house. I'm I'm remote today. Um, yeah. So so just to tag on to, to Larry's comments, um, you know, Santa Rosa is, is 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 really that we're very interested in in you know following up with this the, the countywide effort. And you know, I I was one of the members who participated on, on the the VZAC or technical committee for for Vision Zero and. It came up a, a few times about kind of how we were going to crosswalk uh, the plan with with uh, you know the individual cities and the counties and and I, I think there was a general sense that um, and I know for for myself um, that I'm not comfortable presenting to our council a, a document that wasn't you know city staff generated right. Um, and and then I we just had a recent situation with a, a presentation that somebody took on a city staff person and it wasn't our document and, and it was a bit awkward for for that person with with our council and I I, I don't want to put myself in that position so um, you know I I would hope that you know working through the SCTA we could figure out some way to to bring that value to the individual cities who are interested in, in you know, getting it to their councils to accept. We would probably accept the report, um, Larry. We typically don't adopt, uh, again, a, a report that's not generated by the city, city staff um, or city staff hired consultants, right? So it would probably be more accepting the, the, the report um, and do that by a resolution. So, we're, we're very interested and we'd like to get to our, our council in July, but I, again, would like to see if we could get um, you know, some co-support co on the presentation and have somebody who is more knowledgeable on the plan and the details of the plan make that presentation to our council. So that's, you know, I, I'll stop there. And I know I've talked to a couple cities and I know they kind of have the, the same sense too about you know the the how we proceed with the individual jurisdictional um you know support on on the the vision zero action so i'll stop there um i have a question and maybe you know shauna or others 
the difference between accepting and adopting as far as ATP and OBAG grant, um, you know, there's points associated with Vision Zero is certainly for ATP. And if it is accepted by a city council as opposed to adopted by a city council, do we know if there's any significant difference there? I don't know the answer to that. I would have to look it up and and get back to you. Um, that, that might actually be good. And I don't know if that's Carl at MTC or who that would be, but um, that would be a great question for me at least. <laughs> Does anyone else? Yeah, I, I think that's a good in? call. Does anyone else want to weigh in whether or not their agency is going to be moving forward with adopting, accepting, presenting on the Vision Zero? Ken? Yep. Um, thank you, Chair Zimmer. So we're going to council um, on the on a cons consent calendar on May 12th. I took, uh, you know, the, the draft resolution provided um, with the action plan, with the presentation, put that together in a staff report. I shared it um, with with your with Ben at, in your department and with Nancy. If anybody else wants it, I can send it to them. And I'm just putting it forward, you know, as a consent item. It went through legal review. They didn't flag anything. Um, I um, it's got a lot of support on the on the public you know, realm with the council and I believe with the council and with the public. So that's that's how the city of Petaluma is moving it forward. Thanks. Thank you, Ken. That's very useful. Um, the fact that it went through your legal department is uh, somewhat reassuring. I, I, I think you were a lawyer in a, a prior life and, and I, I just, I felt your your input be very helpful, and I wanted them to take a careful look at it. They did, so I that's um, that's what I took back. Thank you. Anyone else have comments? Um, I'm currently scheduled to move forward with this at my council on May 16th. Uh, I think the current language is adopting. I would like to change to accepting. I like that suggestion from Nancy. Pending uh, feedback from you, Shauna. And apparently no one else is interested in this, so we can move on. To item number 10, adjourn. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you all the committee members. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.